Hi friends, my name is Terry. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes and I've got uh, my first flip phone or dumb phone if you will or wise phone is what uh, one of my uh, people have said meaning that uh, 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 taking a smartphone and actually changing what, what you use to make you wiser in life and we will talk about that but her name is Paige. She kind of goes by gumption on, on her YouTube channel or I have gumption I believe is, is the website and uh, I wanted to. I wanted to. Uh, before I, I, I flip it to you, uh, Paige, just say that I literally uh, just watched some videos. I found Paige, and graciously I emailed her, and she was so nice and, and responded. So Paige and I are. We don't really have a lot of history together, but it literally was just one of those those things of, of the modern age of uh, people helping people, if you will, and just reaching out to each other. And Paige, thanks so much for taking a few minutes and, and chit chatting about your your dumb phone uh, experience. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. I was really excited that you invited me in. I'm excited to talk about this topic. So, awesome. Let's start with uh, uh, let's just start with the aha moment of like, however you want to set it up. But the give give us the genesis story. Of basically, like, when did you feel like this the this whole thing uh, was was a problem or or or, or whatever you want to use uh, as a word? And what what was the tipping point? You know, I get a lot when I when I when I share this out and I bring my flip phone into the wild, so to speak, and, and people are always attracted to it. But there's that like, what actually makes you pull the trigger to try it? Like there there's so much fear around actually letting go, and I'm kind of curious about how you got over that fear and what 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 actually happened to make you make the switch. Uh, you know, it'd been something that had been in my mind for a long time, actually. Four years ago, I got a new iPhone, and I was thinking about it then, but I just wasn't courageous enough to do it. And recently, in April, I noticed that my iPhone, the, it was dying, the battery's dying, and I, I still have it. It's still alive, but kind of barely, I think. And I was painting. I was doing some volunteer work, painting, and I think I was having trouble with my phone that day, and I knew, you know what, I'm just going to get a new phone and I'm gonna get a dumb phone. I'm just gonna get a flip phone because I am sick of dealing with this thing. It's distracting, it's not serving me. And so I kind of made the decision right away after I got done with that project, I went directly to the cell phone store and it's unbelievably hard to actually get, um, sometimes get a, a dumb phone, but mm -hmm. um, it was just that point where I was like, I've gotta make the decision now or I'm gonna be stuck and so I did it and, and wound up getting the flip phone and I got this Alcatel flip phone first. Ah, I like it. So, so what year was that? Can paint a picture for me again. What year roughly oh. was this when you bought that phone? So I bought this phone this year in April. Okay. April so. of 20. Oh, wow. Okay, great. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and then yeah. and then recently, I know I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but and then and then you replace that with your light phone. So you kind of upgraded if you will. I did. So this is the light phone too. Um, and it wasn't very long after I'd gotten this first phone. This is a hundred dollar phone, by the way. So, uh, instead of paying a thousand dollars, a hundred dollars, that's a, a, a better price point. But I found that, um, the light phone had some features and some functionality that I needed as opposed to the flip phone. If I could have mm -hmm. text texted better with the flip phone or had voice to text, I would have stuck with it, um, but that's why I moved to the light phone too. If if I may, uh, just to jump in on that, the one one of the reasons why I fl I I have a Sunbeam, which is a like you can't go into a store and buy this. Uh, you have to buy it online, and they mail it to you, and the whole thing. It's a it's a company in Missouri, I believe. Uh, but the voice to text, like uh, it's annoying. Being that guy walking around talking your phone as you're texting, I guess, because people are like, what did you say? Like my wife always interrupts when I'm, you know, like, who are you talking to me? I'm like, no, I'm not talking. I'm talking to my phone. But uh, if I had to punch in T9 and I and you, you, I, I don't know how old you are not, and I apologize, but I lived prior to cell phone 54. Right. And so I did T9 and I was like, how the hell did I do T9 back then? Because I can't figure out how to do it very well anymore. And and but voice to text is what saved me. And basically. If this phone did not have as good a voice to text as it does, I probably would be searching for an alternative because uh, 
you I just you just can't keep I can't keep up with with T nine texting it, it, and I'm I, and I guess I'm leading to the point you you found the same problem with T nine texting yeah. correct absolutely and I'm you know I'm 46 so I know what it was like before cell phones too I think we were just so excited right to be able mm-hmm. to text that it was mm-hmm. not a big deal but having to backtrack a little bit boy such a pain in the neck and it i mean it's just so time consuming it's not actually serving you to text like that Mm -hmm. because it's it's so time consuming so i found kind of when i had my flip phone that i just would call people Mm -hmm. instead of even texting them to circumvent that a little bit well let me ask you uh, uh, this is not what i had planned but while we're on this little topic the tactical one thing that uh, with a flip for me is actually having buttons and i'm kind of curious because you went back to the light phone which is all touch screen again mm-hmm. i i have found uh having a button and like i have my wife speed dialed on number two so i can literally not even look at my phone open it find number two click it and it's dialing her phone i mean it, it's there it's like there's little things like that that i'm like wow this is so easy Compared to like messing with it, got to get it in front of my face with the iPhone, blah, blah, blah. And I guess you could be like, hey, Siri, but I, don't, I never was much into that. I don't, I don't know. What, what, what's your thoughts about having buttons and then not having buttons, just out of curiosity? Um, it doesn't bother me, I guess, because uh, I didn't use the functionality that you're using, like, say, to call your wife with it. Mm-hmm. So I, d- I found it kind of cumbersome anyway uh mm-hmm. this isn't necessarily perfect either it's not something that you can drive and and be on the phone you shouldn't be doing that anyway but you should not be doing um, that anyway right yeah exactly <laughs> but um it's i don't mind it um let's see i even have made it more difficult because i have a password but you can kind of see like oh maybe you can't yeah you can kind of see like it doesn't have the same functionality but i don't mind that i touch it because i had that iphone for so long Mm-hmm. And this isn't necessarily perfect. They're always kind of tweaking it and improving it. But I really have found that I'm just not on it that much mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. it's just a phone instead of like the stimulating device that's entertainment as well. Mm-hmm. So, I don't, I don't all right. Mind. All right. I like that. So I'm, I'm going to continue down this because I've got it's like I I. I I had planned a certain method, and we talked about that. I'm going to get to that, but I've got we're we're going down a really good a good line here. So, um, talk about were you ever tempted? Were you ever tempted to put that SIM card back into your smartphone? Did you, did you have I any have, of those moments? Well, admittedly, like I said, I still have my smartphone, so I still can use it for certain things like Audible mm-hmm. or the camera video thing or video Mm -hmm. editing sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, But no, I think there's a lot of freedom of being able to leave the house. Sometimes I even leave the house without my cell phone now because it's not top of mind anymore. Uh, But like there's a lot of freedom of being able to leave and be present in your life and just have this phone that you have in case of emergency or, Mm -hmm. you know, if you, your spouse texts you, you know, Hey, bring this home or whatever. Um, there's a lot of freedom in that. So I kind of get excited when I leave the house to go somewhere because I don't take that second iPhone with me because I don't need it. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it's funny when, when I recommend or when people ask me about like like getting the phone and everything, the, the, one of the the first thing is I'm like instead of spending 200 bucks on a phone or, or, or whatever, the first thing I tell them to do, I'm like as a test – Make sure your wife is at home. It's a Sunday afternoon. Everything is fine. And and go do something. Go like, hey, wife, uh, spouse, I'm going to Home Depot, and then I'm going to go buy Starbucks and get a cup of coffee. And I'm like, take two hours. Go go shop someplace. Then go sit down with a cup of coffee without a phone. Just leave everything behind your smartphone, and then drive home and just see how you feel. And and mm-hmm. you'd be. I remember feeling like I'd left my wallet behind. Like oh my god. Like like you. I had these this anxiety of like like I I don't I don't know. Did, but but I think that's a good first step to make to to see how you would react to not having a phone. Any thoughts around that that activity? Absolutely. I mean, I think that's great because it forces you to be present. It's I kind of liken it to like riding a bicycle. When you ride a bike through a neighborhood, you see things you never see in a car because you're looking around, you're present in that moment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Same thing with uh, leaving your cell phone 
at home, you have to be present. You have to be uncomfortable. You have to be bored. Mm -hmm. um, you have to look at things and just be immersed in your surroundings where you, you, you know, if you have that phone with you, you don't have that same experience. Yes. Yes. You know, there's that moment of like when you feel that boredom that you just mentioned or discomfort, whatever that is, it's like we all have coping mechanisms and essentially the phone has become that's what you reach for you and you're looking you're well, you don't really think about it in that moment but when you get some distance it's like you're looking for something you're looking for something external to to satisfy uh and and for some people that that could be smoking a cigarette or that could be uh uh, you know, it maybe if it's happy or having a beer or whatever, mm -hmm. but a lot of us are, are just, we pick up that phone. We're trying to soothe something. And I don't think that might not be all the time, but I think that there's, there's a part of that in there that, uh, and I think we could be, uh, mindful of like digging in and going, what is that? What is that little thing that I'm, I'm trying to, mm -hmm. to, to solve? Right. Um, yeah. it's, 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 it's a total, I mean, we're getting all kind of in the weeds on that. I want to bring it back to you a little bit on uh, you're a creative, right? And I've done some, mm -hmm. I did, you know, I dug around on your YouTube channel and your website and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, tell, tell us a little bit about, uh, especially with the, the mindfulness that we're talking about, you know, I don't know if you're a fan of Cal Newport deep work and things like that. My guess is you're at least aware of his work, right? And doing art like, like, that would be like like when you get in your flow moments or something like that can you can you talk a little bit about maybe the benefits or the what you've experienced prior having the smartphone and and and, and uh how your deep work activities were 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 then and how they are now and kind of and, and maybe even kind of going a little bit about what you do i'd I'd love to hear more okay uh let's see so of course, the phone is like a major distraction, and as artists or creatives, uh, it's really easy to get it wrapped up in what other people are doing creatively. Um, for example, like Instagram can really, you're looking and seeing how what other people doing are doing. It can influence you a little bit, I think, or just keep you from doing work. And so um, I, when I made this transition, the thing that has been important for me is to help me kind of remove myself from social media and just immerse myself in the work. So um, I enjoy those times where I get to paint. Like you can see, I have a painting in process now. I can spend hours painting. I lose myself in that whole process, right? Because it's so creative um, and it's good for my brain and good for my soul. It's like meditation truly for mm. me. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so the less distractions I have, the less my phone is dinging, the less um, of that, the more productive I am and the more that I feel like I kind of find my voice in my work because I'm doing the work. I love it. If that makes sense. Absolutely. Um, and even though I'm still on social media, I still, you know, obviously I'm filming some of the things that I do. I do feel a lot less anxiety in general just because I don't have these things interrupting me all the time and it allows me to focus. Whereas if you're busy filming stuff or busy um, looking at what other people are doing on Instagram, you're not in that zone. Mm -hmm. So uh, I do think that post smartphone, even though I still have all these devices around me, I am more cognizant of using them. I'm on social media less. I believe, you know, I'm not mindlessly scrolling. I'm tuning in to post something. I'm out and I'm still allotting time to work. Hopefully I love it. that answers that question. Absolutely. So let's, let's go a little bit deeper on, I'm kind of curious, uh, shifting away from a little bit of the smartphone, but just, uh, as an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, <laughs> if I can say the word correctly, is it in your family? Is it in your blood? How long have you been doing it? Uh, and and then lead us into kind of like what what you actually uh, obviously you have paintings uh are you selling direct or or like and and this is sustaining you full is like it's like your full-time job i'm just kind of curious about uh it takes a certain mindset to step out like you've done it and i'm just uh, if you could just kind of share a little bit around that whole process and and like who your clients are and 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 you know just kind of open the floor to that i'm, I'm just kind of curious to hear that hear about that journey Cool. Well, I have had a, a kind of a side business since I think 2009, just doing freelance work because I have 
um, a degree in graphic design. So I started out in graphic design, always painting and doing that um, on the side, but had kind of the side business while I worked professionally. I worked in construction for a lot of years. It, that put me through school. And then um, graphic design kind of started my career. And so my business gumption, I revamped my business in I think 2017 and started um, selling stickers uh, mm -hmm. of illustrations that I do um, and also illustration uh, for clients too, so some commercial clients as well. Um, and I got my graduate degree in illustration. So I've been in school for a long time. I've been doing this kind of business thing for a long time. Um, and I'm kind of goal oriented. And so I think that's kind of where it all sort of stems from. But, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, so I have gumption is one side of my business. It's a business that's illustration and and teaching, I teach watercolor classes too oh, okay. nice. online, and that's the majority of probably my channel. And then, you know, we kind of reevaluated my business last year because I was really burnt out, and mm -hmm. um, I decided to move into the painting scope. I've always painted, but it's kind of where my business is going, uh, and so I plan on doing some uh, shows and, and really move into that Western wildlife thing because it honestly brings it. me the jo most joy. So I kind of do them both now um, with goal of painting full time. And of course, I kind of love teaching. So I kind of still do that on the side because I have a handful of students who love to paint with me. So I love it. I love it. How, how, how does uh how does YouTube play a part in your business and how have you, how do you, how do you see YouTube like, um, and I guess I'm trying to kind of push in on it. Is it, is it a distraction or do you think do you find it helpful? Uh, cause you've been making videos for about five years. I'm just kind of curious on that. That's, that's, you know, there's a million YouTube channels that, that pop up and then just go dormant and you've been, you've been with it for a while. I'm, I'm kind of curious of, of your experience with YouTube. So YouTube's kind of interesting. <laughs> so, uh, I I started a YouTube channel in 2009, actually, because I was doing the Seattle to Portland bike ride. Oh. And so I did a channel that was dedicated to the process of that. I think I've always had kind of like a teacher in mm -hmm. me, I guess, because mm -hmm. I wanted to share what training for a 204-mile bike ride looked like, you know, over two days. And so it kind of started there. And I kind of am interested in the process of things. So when I started my, this YouTube channel, I, um, it was kind of for fun because I dig uh, video and editing video and kind of photography and that sort of thing. But it became a real necessity, uh, to share my work actually, and the process behind it I found, but also because I was teaching in the last couple of years, I haven't been able to teach in person. And the demographic that I was teaching was an at-risk population for illness, and I didn't want to put them at risk, but I wanted to still provide them with classes that they could tune into so they could keep painting. And that's where my YouTube channel really had a mission. It started having a mission to, to help people learn to paint. I love it. I love it. That's great. That's a great story. Um, yeah, that's awesome. So... Um, anything else you, you want to say about the, the business side of things before I, I kind of turn us back to tools and, and phones and, and, and that sort of thing? I can't think of anything. Yeah, that was good. That was good. So in, in watching some of your videos about your flip phone or your uh, dumb phone, the, the, just real quick on that, <clears throat> the whole dumb phone, flip phone, I know because they're not all flip phones, but dumb phone is such a horrible I don't like I don't like saying that term. Do you? Do, how do you feel about the term dumb phone? Let's just go I, there. I, I, I kind of feel the same way because I feel like it's kind of a smart decision to step away yeah. from a, a cell phone. So I don't I don't love it either. I kind of like I guess feature phone. Feature phone, um, yeah, yeah. Because dumb phone kind of makes it a uh, sound like I don't know. It's not the best. But. Yep. I'm I'm going to ask you I'm going to ask you a an, a different question going back to the phones. So there seems to be from my exploration of it a, a uh, exploration being like just looking around what people are doing with this whole movement, right? Uh, um, people that are like, hey, I'm going to take my smartphone 
and because I can't, I can't, there's certain things I need there and I'm just gonna dumb down my phone. Like I'm gonna make it a stock and I'm not gonna put certain things on my phone. Uh, have you, tr did you try that route? Do you have any feelings about that and where that falls? How, how, I guess what I'm trying to ask, how much is that, are they lying to themselves? Will that get you part of the way there? Do you need to go all the way to the crazies like us and have, have a, a phone like this in order to get the full benefits? Do you have any, what, what are your thoughts around that whole, that whole question? I think if you are able to do that, you have immense self-control. I just don't think it's really realistic. I mean, just having access still to my old iPhone, I feel like it's cheating in a way, in certain ways, because I can use it for Audible and things. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think if that's the way you operate, that's great. I don't know that it's really going to work for you. Um, mm -hmm. Personally, I started by turning off all my notifications, which super was super helpful because mm -hmm. I was not interrupted all the time. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is helpful, and that's what I'd recommend if you're just not going to get rid of your smartphone. But I, I don't know how people can do that. I feel like it's you either go whole hog or yeah. you're going to regress a little bit. Yeah. I think the uh, yeah, I, I I I found the same thing. I put my I put my I regressed in October because I'm a baseball fan and I wanted to listen to the the and I have the uh, um, the radio app on on the MLB so I can listen to the radio feed. Um, I'm not a big TV watcher, so I I actually like listening to baseball. And that all is to say, I could do it on Wi-Fi, but I was traveling. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna. And so I popped my SIM card back into my iPhone 12, and. I don't really have anything on my iPhone, and I would sit there and just pick up my iPhone. Like I, I've already, I already had three months. Like I thought I'd already broken the habit, and just having the phone, I would just be like, "What am I looking at?" There's nothing literally to do. It, there's just something attractive about. I mean, it's a beautiful device. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know. And people could, you know, it's it's the adage of uh, there was a real smart uh, social critic in the '90s called Neil Postman, and uh, before before phones and everything else. But he used to talk about um, uh, a technology uh, versus a medium, and and the techno he he would say a technology is is the brain. And the medium is the mind, is how he would he would phrase it, and it, and it really like I, it took me a long time to get my mind around that. Uh, but the phone is such a blend of yes, you can you can make the argument. It's just a piece of hardware. It's no different than this coffee mug. Is this? It's a piece of technology to hold liquid, and that's it. And it's just a phone. But the smartphone is there's just there's just something about it that that transforms it more into a medium uh, mm -hmm. than than just than just a, a device, if you will, I think. That's just my two cents. It's a very well, and it lights up your brain, right? Like that's what yes. it's designed for. Yes. Yes. It's it's designed to keep you coming back. It's a marketing tool. Um, and I mean that's the way you know, you mentioned Cal's uh, book, um, Deep Work. Well that's I mean, when you read that you go, Oh yeah, it's definitely using me as the marketing tool. <laughs> yes. Who who's serving who? In this case, yep. right? When mm -hmm. what what I love what I love if I can plug my uh, my little my little flip phone here. I'm, I I don't think that the this is a. I mean, when you go from a thousand dollar device, my my gorgeous iPhone that takes amazing pictures and video. I mean, it just and then you go to this thing. Uh, I mean, this is twenty year old technology, plasticky. It's 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 nice. But what I what what I love. I mean, it's not as nice. But what I love is that in the morning. This whole, when, you know, I, I love those videos that you watch that are like, uh, oh, well, you know, don't, don't pick up your phone for at least the first 30 minutes when you wake up. Hell, I, I never pick this up unless it actually makes a noise because there's a blue button here that says I missed a call and there's a green button here that says I have a text message and it sits on a little stand and I can just walk in my office and I can glance don't have to touch it, don't have to look at it, and I know immediately, do I need to take an action or not? If it rings, mm -hmm. I pick it up. If it doesn't, I don't. And it's like it's become such a irrelevant. Uh, it just fades in the background a lot more, right? Uh, yeah. It so puts it in its place. Yeah, it, it it puts it in its place. Let's talk about the other thing that really I, I'm a uh, I'm a bullet journal user. I don't know if you're aware of the whole bullet journal world that that exists. And I've been using the bullet journal for years, and it's it's not a perfect solution, but it is an analog tool. 
And I am kind of curious, um, you mentioned in a couple of your videos analog tools that you use. The, I, I thought I, I'd love for you to speak a little bit about your address book concept, the passport or the password concept uh, book that you're using, and a little bit about your tr time tracking tool. Uh, do you, can you speak to those three, those three elements that you've implemented since uh, moving away from a smartphone? Absolutely. So kind of, uh, well, I use an address book now. I keep my addresses in there, mostly because I had such a terrible transition with my um, contacts from the iPhone to the flip phone mm -hmm. to the light phone too, uh, that I just started keeping an address book. And consequently, I started actually writing people letters yes. to connect in an analog sort of way because I wanted, I felt like it was more meaningful. Yes. And so, so the address book, then I got a password keeper book that I can just write passwords in for my internet usage because I have a password keeper on the old cell phone but I felt like maybe I kind of like that analog business so it was easy to refer to mm -hmm. uh, especially when I had the flip phone it was just not user friendly and then third you know I uh, as far as timekeeping goes I actually have reverted from using the phone to keep track of my time. Now I use a printout. I have a little spreadsheet printout that I manually write down my time tracking. I actually keep better time that way because I don't forget to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then once a month I enter it into a spreadsheet and then have it all nice so I can uh, charge clients or what projects um, time gotcha. to those things. So um, and because I grew up in the 70s and 80s, those are things that are not uh, foreign to me. It's not mm -hmm. weird to do that, but it also saves me money, right? Like I don't have to pay a subscription fee for a timekeeping tool. Yes. Uh, and so those are some analog things. I also use paper to keep track of my time and, uh, you know, what's happening in the future uh, as far as my calendar goes and stuff because I never quite have for myself personally been able to use um, calendars online and stuff I just it's mm -hmm. always been paper because I can kind of remember it if I write it down yes that's interesting and so and and I have done the bullet journal thing too and really enjoy it I've just kind of uh, slid away from that into the calendar yes actually. Yeah. It, it, the bullet journal is is uh it's evolved so much because there's a lot of artistry and a lot of people and are attracted to that but at its base nature and then the calendar and future, like it's very good in the in the in the now. Like what I, because I there's this concept that writer uh, uh, has called the daily log. So you just write the thing, the date, at the essentially like if you ever wanted to start bullet journaling, like the first thing you do, you pick up any sheet of paper or notebook and you just write today's date and you just start thinking, okay, brain dump, what do I got to get done today, well, whatever your stuff is. And then as something comes up, if I'm working, I'm like, oh, I got to call Susie and I'm doing something. The point is those thoughts come to your head and you're like, when you tab away or go somewhere, it breaks concentration. I just bullet point, call Susie, move on with life. And then, and then, you, then you reflect back through the day and you're like, oh yeah, call Susie. Where am I going to place that? How am I going to remember that? And either you move it forward, you move it back, you put it someplace, right? Um, and and there's the there's the capture and then the reflective part of it and i think we all do that as a natural process but it gives you uh the the the, the notebook it's like it's there it's like it, 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 i hear uh, people in productivity talk about like a source of truth the the notebook becomes because it's bound becomes that source of truth it's like okay i wrote it. it if any kind of anxiety pops up i'm like no i don't know exactly what page it is but i know within a couple of pages and then also going uh, i can find that information and if i may while i'm on i'm on a, i know i'm kind of over talking about uh this is that the a paper journal and i'm curious if, if you would find this helpful or, or maybe you do something like that is if i get a call from a client and they're asking me things and i'm thinking of course obviously in the call i'm like oh yeah i can start flipping two three pages back i'm like oh no hey Susie, yeah we talked on monday blah 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 and i've got notes from that call in my book mm -hmm. and i can refer without clicking without searching for her account or anything like that which is all there too right the the analog goes into the digital for, for record keeping mm -hmm. but it gives me a, a quick reference tool basically to kind of like um, uh, log what i've done essentially right uh which yeah. i think that i think is pretty handy so Excellent. I think too, you probably remember it better. 
you know that you've written it down, you know you had a conversation because you wrote it down. Yes, and I'm gonna show one more thing and then I've got, a, I, we're about 30 minutes in, but I got more questions for you. Do you have a little bit more time for me? Absolutely. Okay, cool. This, this is a little three by five card box and if you look, uh, I, I don't wanna make this a huge deal, but it's this alphanumeric, right? And I, so I've got an alpha, A, B, C, D, whatever, and then I've got the months of the year, and then I've got the, it's a classic 43 folder David Allen kind of concept, right? But what I do is, it's like a recipe box. And, and so my uh, cards for instead of the address book, it's funny you mentioned that, I basically, people that I, that I, I have, uh, I've got over here, I've got little cards uh, that I like to use for address. So I have one card for an address and I got a different card for something else. And I put their name and their address and a phone number and I file them in here. And so I'm like, oh, I need to call Susie. I just boom, boom, boom. And there's her, there's her number if I don't have it in my phone. Um, and my passwords go in here. I have a section for passwords. I've got, and it's just like little bits of data. Basically what, what it's recreated for me is everyone uses the notes app on their phone, right? To type in all these mm -hmm. things. Essentially, if it's like a little note capture, I'd make a three by five. It's like my reference. It's, it's a reference desk. And if I have things I'm going to do in January, like I've already started, I just take a three by five card. I'm like, you know, I need to do that, blah, 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 blah. And I dump it in there. And then I just pull out because it's, it's not really that earth shattering, the things that I'm, they're not my, they're not my insurance work that I do. It's, it's more just personal things. And it's, and it's, uh, it's going back to that, like, oh, it's in the future and it's in, and I'm not, oh, it's in there. I'll worry about that later kind of thing. Uh, it's interesting how these analog tools, how simple they are. And people are like, oh my God, like they, they they're, there's like, what do you mean? You're writing it down. You're, where are you going to find that? I'm like, it's right here sitting next to my desk, you know? Yeah. Well, that's really interesting. I'm really interested in that method. I think I almost like that better than having a book. Yeah, it it because you know, it, it's it, all together. It, it's it's a challenge because it's like I don't have I don't have that threaded of history of what I've done like the bullet journal can give you or like your time tracker that you have a you have a chronological uh, because it's like a one off like but uh, I, like I made my note card for today. Uh, I, I, I use Baron Fig's note. Basically, what my little my little secret sauce is uh, there's a little three by five card. It's got the little however many dots on it. And for my personal life, whatever my wife tells me, and I'm like, okay, blah blah blah. When I'm done with work, I pick up this card, and I'm like, okay, here's what I got to get done. And it's like, let's be honest, there's seven there's seven entries. How if I've got more than seven things to do after work, that's probably more than I'm going to get done. Like it's I write them on the card. And, and I just go through my card basically. And I'm like, yeah, I'm done. But, and, and the problem with that, going back to that is then you, I don't really have a record because I wind up ripping up the card. Right. And I'm like, oh yeah, did I do that yesterday? What day? You know, when you write it in the bullet journal, um, I don't know. I'm on, I'm on a tangent. Let's, let's get back to the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, uh, analog tools definitely have their place and they go well with the flip phone. And I think that to your point that you made, you, you mentioned earlier, the um, what you think about where our attention is, uh, analog tools I think serve us better from a creativity. And you you deal in the creative space, so you, so do you do you find yourself being more creative when you when you're not in a digital space? Oh yeah, I think so because it forces you to think. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, so I think it's definitely helpful. I think it's almost imperative in the digital space because we're inundated with all the stuff all the time to really explore your own thoughts and um, kind of what, what you envision on a canvas or what you're trying to say, what your opinion is about something. So I think it's important. Tell me, tell me what your thoughts around whether this is a, a true movement, whatever that move, movement might mean, or is it just a fad to get clicks on YouTube to say, hey, I tried a flip phone for 30 days. Uh, do you think there, do you think there's real traction going on out there with shifting away from the smartphone space? I do think so. Um, it might, there might be a part of it that is, uh, a fad, but I think a lot of people are surely kind of noticing in their own personal lives, how much this phone business has taken over their lives. I mean, if you walk in a downtown anywhere, and people are walking, how many of those people are standing at the crosswalk looking at their phone? A, a lot. lot, a lot. Um, and I think we feel it. I think mm -hmm. um, 
you know, of course at my age now, I'm kind of more conscious of, um, how is my brain health? Mm -hmm. You know, am I, do I have ADD or am I just distracted by this device? Mm -hmm. And I think if I'm feeling that way, I know other people are. And I think it's, so I think it's here. It may not be the majority of people who are going to go switch, but I think there are people who are aware. And I think by doing videos and talking about it in the space that we are, it's important. It, it lets people know there's an alternative way to operate. You don't actually have to have a smartphone to function in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and you and I know that because of our age, right? We yep. have life before cell phones, before technology, and life after. So we know we can manage that. So even yes. young people, I think it's important for them to see, hey, yeah, I can do that. Like, I can look yes. it up in a map or, or I can print it out, print it out, you know. Yes. So I think I think it goes back to from a philosophical point of view of um, our connectedness to the world, not to get all mm -hmm. excuse me, I've got a cough. <coughs> I'll see if I can edit that out. I, I'm so sorry. Uh, no of, of being connected to the world like we're part of, you know, uh, we're part of we're, we're, we're part of the species, you know, and and and. Mm -hmm the digital pulls us away. I think it pulls us away from feeling human and wrestling with, um, you know, they're wrestling with our humanity basically. And, and like, what does it all mean? And it's trying to replace that meaning versus us finding there, there's, there's, there's a reason why throughout history in the, in the mythology and, and, and different, uh, literature, uh, people go on quests and they, and they learn and they're trying, they're trying to self discover and going back to your point about looking at Instagram affecting your art. It's like when we, when we pick up that device and look outward, uh, we're, we're trying to solve that problem of our quest, of so our meaning and our purpose through something else versus dealing with it ourselves and facing our own, our own dragons, if you will. Um, and, and I know that's, that's kind of in a different headspace, but we're interrupting. I, I'm of the belief that technology, even, even, even online sometimes, but, but it's harder to carry around the laptop and always have the laptop open where you have the phone in front of you. It's disrupting our, it's disrupting that flow. And I think that's why there's, it's driving unhappiness. That's 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 yeah. part of my little working theory, if you will. Um, I agree. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the negatives. It, like I went to uh, and culture. I went to Dallas this weekend to visit some family and friends up in a, a little cute little hip area called Oak Cliff, and um, we had tickets to an NPR comedy show called uh, the the Wait Wait Don't Tell Me is on tour, and and they 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 had some comics and that sort of thing. You had to install an you could not get a PDF print out of these tickets you had to install this particular app and then show that app and of course i don't have my you know i didn't want to bring my i could have done it on my iphone i made my wife do it <laughs> it's always good if you if you're going to go flip phone have your have a spouse that still has a smartphone to help you with things right um, right yeah and then we went to a restaurant and they didn't have mm -hmm. i'm like we're post covid but i've got to scan a code and i asked for a paper menu and they literally and this was a nice like uh like i ordered a a, a a new york strip steak it was like 50 dollars, which is fine it's a nice it was a very nice restaurant uh but i mean like this is a nice high-end restaurant so to speak and they wouldn't give me a menu they acted like i was a nut and and i looked around at the tables and everyone, it immediately, basically, you're there to, to have community at, at, and break bread together, if you will. And first thing it forces you to do is everyone's got a phone. So now they're looking at the menu, but they're like, oh, hey, what about this picture? What about? And everyone's communicating and showing and, and, and the phones are on the table all of a sudden, right? Mm -hmm. it, 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 um, I, those are two negatives that I see. Immediately. And then the third one would be parking. I go to a parking spot. This is just one weekend. And it's like, oh, well, you can't pay unless you have an app. You see what I'm saying? Have you experienced it? Yeah. Maybe, maybe, you know, though, Dallas is a big city, obviously. Uh, mm -hmm. But have you experienced any of those things? Do you have any other, any thoughts around any of that? You know, uh, we've definitely experienced the, um, the uh, restaurant situation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, because we aren't too far from Salt Lake. And I remember the last time we went to Salt Lake, I had my flip phone, I think, at that time. And they, same thing, but they provided a menu when I said, I don't, I don't have a smartphone. You're going to have to give me a menu and they had them. So they provided them. So 
Um, there, but there are things like that where you, you might need the QR code for something to do something. Mm -hmm. And so I guess I haven't had as many run-ins with that and I've been able to kind of get around it. It is, it does concern me, I guess, because I do not want to be forced to have a smartphone and mm -hmm. I don't think it's fair to a certain population who don't have cell phones. You know, we have some older folks, um, who still don't have cell phones or don't know how to use them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, I, so I don't know what that's going to look like moving forward. Cause I feel like we're moving towards everything happening on the cell phone, but mm -hmm. I guess that's something that we have to kind of, uh, experience on a case by case basis. Do you remember back in the day? It, it I, I don't have this thought well formulated, but I wanted to get your thoughts on this. You know, they, they used to speak about this digital divide. The concern 15 years ago is like, oh, we have some haves who have who have online and some who don't. And there was a separation and how we're going to close that gap. And I think when I speak about the flip phone to, 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 to people around me that are curious, you know, in, in real life, if you will, my friends or uh, people who see me with one, uh, they, because they had, they have their phone, they, they assume that you can step off this culture ride that we're going to in this direction and just live without a smartphone. But what, what, what I'm seeing it, like, in other words, my thought is that they they have this opinion, oh, we're going down this path. And that at any time you can just reverse course and walk right back out and find your way back out. But what I'm finding is through the QR codes and the parking app and the ticket app that they're erasing that path, so to speak, or, or closing it off. So that as you try to back out of this process, you, you can't. You're stuck. If you want to participate in culture, society almost, they're, 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 they're putting barriers to exit, if you will. Um, then that's a business term. I'm, I'm sure you, you're aware of it, right? That that people do that all the time. They try to fence you in. Oh, they're my customer now. Let's let's fence them in so they can't leave me as a as yeah. their supplier, right? And and I think mm -hmm. that that that's slowly happening. Um, that's that sounds alarmist when I say it out loud, but but it, but I'm feeling that by yeah. using the flip phone. Uh, and it, and I don't think you're wrong. Sorry. Jay. No, no, please, please take the floor. I know I, I, I'm, I'm, I I'm interviewing you, but I'm, I'm, I'm going on these little rants and I apologize, so, but, but go ahead. Oh, I love it. It's a conversation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but I feel it too. I mean, I, I could even say from a design perspective, we used to have to buy software that we could install on our computer. Well, now we don't have disk drives. Now we have to have a subscription service. Mm -hmm. We're tied into this thing. If we can't escape it, it's part of doing business. Same kind of with a cell phone. Yes, it's interesting. And I, I don't know how you get around that, but I think you have to decide for yourself what your personal boundaries are and what is serving you mentally. And if you have to have a secondary smartphone to go to a concert or something, or a spouse that has that phone, I guess you do that. Mm -hmm. I just think people, at some point, I think people will realize uh, my life is not being served by this device so i yes. have to set some ground rules for it I yes mean, we we may not be able to escape it but we can at least figure out what works for us absolutely how, how do you deal with the camera so let's talk another one that that i probably missed the most i solved my music problem by installing itunes i'm old enough to have a whole ton of mp3s on a hard drive somewhere and it's like mm -hmm. how many i like i'm a u2 fan right i threw some u2 on there i got about five six hundred songs i figured out how to sync podcasts again to an ipod on ipod it's a i don't have it i should have brought it out but it's a little and and just a tidbit on this while i'm going because i want to go to the cameras where i'm going with this but for anyone out there who doesn't have an ipod you could literally, this is what I did because the one that I had was old and the battery wouldn't take a charge. I emailed five of my closest friends and I got seven iPods for free. They literally like, yeah, I had this in a drawer and blah, blah, blah. They're everywhere. Everyone's got iPods sitting in a drawer somewhere. This email some friends. It don't even go buy one. They'll probably give them to you is what I'm trying to say. And iTunes still exists. You just have to install it. And uh, you could probably borrow some CDs, if you would, and and put them in your iTunes. People probably have CDs laying around too that you could get, right? Uh, or go to Goodwill. That's what I did. You can buy CDs for a dollar, and <laughs> and I got some Elton John and and whatever. But uh, yeah. so I solved that puzzle. But the camera, 
I'm trying to figure out because the the obvious solution is carry your smartphone like you have, right? Because it's a I, and it's like my iPhone 12 is probably I can't figure out what little Canon camera that's small that I can carry with me that's that will suffice because the ones that I got access to are crappier than my phone. So then I wind up carrying my phone and then I go through the process of, well, if I'm going to carry a smartphone and a flip phone, why don't I just carry my smartphone? Yeah. You know, it's like, how, how, how do you solve that whole thing? Uh, well, you know, I wound up buying a Canon. It's a G7 Mark III, I think. And well, Don't quote me on that, but I think that's the name. So it's a little point and shooter. And what's the price point? DSL. What's the price point on that, you think? More than 500? Um, it's about 700 bucks. Okay, so okay. It's not a cheap venture. So... When you look at the, for me personally, like uh -huh. when I was trying to save money, I didn't really save money by doing this, <laughs> right? jumping off the boat, but um, I have enriched my life, so I figure that's probably worthwhile. So I do, in the studio, I use this little um, point and shoot camera all the time. I'm taking video with it. I vlog with it if I, you know, if that's what's going on. Um, I take, because I take photos all the time for my creative work, mm -hmm. I have to have a camera. I feel naked without a camera, so... Um, that was my solution to at least help me leave that smartphone at home so I wasn't using it. Nothing is as convenient as using that smartphone for video and taking photos. But um, if you just get a camera, you use it for what it's the purpose is. You get better photos for it, better video. Mm -hmm. And so that would be my recommendation. Maybe you don't have to spend that much money, but mm -hmm. if you want a nice little camera, well, it definitely has worked for me. Going back to your point is I spent $1,000 on this iPhone, and mm -hmm. my guess would be that Mark 7 or two, or whatever the Canon camera you have would probably outlast. I mean, they, they force you to upgrade every two to three years, mm -hmm. right? So that's a, you know, you're thinking within yeah. five years, you probably have spent $2,000. I'm imagining that Canon camera is going to last you more than five years. Or right at five oh, years, absolutely. let's see, right? So like 700 yeah. versus three. I mean, I'm, I'm just doing a little playing around with numbers, right? If you spend $1,000 every five years on a camera to kind of keep yourself current. Um, yeah, because I, I went down that rabbit hole of which one do I want? And I got over in the Fuji world. And next thing you know, I'm, and the camera that I selected was $1,200. And I was like, eee! But I mean, it was so cool. And, you know, and I was like, oh, that's a, you know. And, and, and so uh, you feel that that Canon camera... Uh, takes as good a phone you can you can you can make it perform as well as an iphone oh absolutely it's just not i mean and it's super convenient in itself already it's just not something that's in your pocket all the time yes. right like a cell phone would be yes i think the other thing is to know is i take photographs of everything seriously mm -hmm. you know i'm kind of documenting it so a couple things happens when you flip out your cell phone people are not they don't think that's weird uh, for people to take pictures with a cell phone. But I think when you whip out a camera, there might be a little bit of something yes. where people are like, oh, this person has a camera. They don't really... Yes. It's just a different mindset. It is. Um, it it, it but, is. Yeah. So, And then also with that cell phone, something to note there is, I don't know about you, but I have like 40,000 images on my iCloud. Mm -hmm. Um you're paying for storage mm -hmm. for those photos. Whereas when you have a camera, you're not paying for storage for that. You're probably taking more uh, relevant imagery. So you're not taking camera or pictures of everything around you, which might make you a little more present in your current situation. Yes. Uh, and you're not paying for storage for it. Absolutely. I just look, I just look and, and talk about, uh, we could talk about just the stress of, I have 21,794 pictures, 3,500 videos, right? And I bought my first Mac. That's what's so amazing. When I go to the years and I click back, I, I, I bought my first Mac in 2004. I've got pictures all the way back to 2004 on here. And, and there's a stress level of like when I go into my photos, it's just like, oh yeah, I could organize them. I can make a little... They, but I don't do crap with it because I'm just been click, 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 and I'm like, got to find it. And, and, and it's like they, they sold us on this idea that you would be able – and you could make all these cool little uh, albums or whatever. But most people search, 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 or they scroll, scroll, scroll. Uh, it doesn't really solve – like like iPhoto or whatever the hell they call the photo app on iOS now, which is amazing. I mean, it really is compared to 15 years ago, but it didn't really solve anything because you still have to do the mindful work of looking, making a decision, 
maybe fixing the image. I don't know. I'm, I'm digressing on that. But photos are, are uh, I think what your point, what I'm hearing, what I'm trying to get to is your point is you'll probably take less. You'll care about the ones you do take and then treat them with more respect. Yeah. And, and put them where they need to be. And put them where, yes. them in some way. Yes. Yeah. Because we, we, yeah, we, we snap, you know, our, our, and, and I, I think your point's pretty apt that uh, how much of my money am I giving Apple on a, on a subscription, mm -hmm. not to, not to or, 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 or a Google or whoever people use. Yeah. Um, it's crazy. It's crazy. Well, yeah. well and it, go ahead. It's a creeper. It is. And then, and it's it, a creeper. These things just sort of creep into your life and then you're like, how do I extricate myself from all of this? Absolutely. Well, I want to be mindful of our time, and uh, I want I want to kind of wrap up by you. You had a story that your that your mother uh, shared with you about um, mm -hmm. about how to frame a phone, what a phone actually means. Can Can you share a little bit about that story, and then uh, when when that's done, maybe kind of a little bit about how people can find you if they want. And I'm going to obviously put links about your 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 stuff, but I'd, I'd love you. I'd love to hear your voice on that story again from your mother. Oh, thank you. Well, my mom always, you know, I was always on the phone as a teenager. Uh, and um, growing up, she always said, the phone is for your use. So it's a tool. And you don't have to answer it if you don't want to. It's not something that you have to answer every time it beeps or somebody calls. If it's not a good time for you, then call them back. It's for your use. And I think I always kind of think about that, especially in this time now as we've switched phones. Is, this is for my use. It, it doesn't need to create anxiety for me. I don't have to answer it right now if I'm in the middle of a meeting or um, anything. I can use it. I can leave it in my office overnight and come back to it and treat it like a business. And at 8 a.m., hey, okay, I've got some phone calls I need to return. And so I think eliminating the constant feeling like we have to be on it in some fashion alleviates that pressure. Um, you, know, you know, and you and I both know a time before a voicemail, a time before caller ID, a time when you just answered the phone and you did not know who was calling. <laughs> maybe you got it, yeah. maybe you didn't. Maybe, yes. There's a lot of freedom in that, right? So um, we like to know what's happening, but we, we really we get to pick what is influencing our headspace. Yes, I love it. I love it. It's so insightful because it it, it is, uh, it's true. It's like they um, they're selling us solutions to problems we probably didn't really even have. Is what mm -hmm. the, is what the truth is. Um, the the it's just so. Paige, thank you so much for taking the time. I mean, I I I. Uh, I probably uh, indulge myself a little much with, uh, but because I love talking about this, and, and so uh, I appreciate you being uh, generous with allowing me to kind of go on my little rants and everything. But uh, can you uh, just share a little bit about, uh, you know, where where you know if someone wanted to know more about you, more, know more about your art, how, how would how, what how do you like people to engage with you, and what what would you where would you tell them to go to, to learn more about you? Uh, there are a couple ways that you can find me. You can visit IHaveGumption.com. That is my illustration business. And you can also visit PageWeber.net. That's my mm -hmm. painting business. Um, and I, I prefer, honestly, email because I will respond to that more than anything, actually. But you can find me on social media as well under both of those handles um too i'm on instagram and facebook too so uh but yeah i i really appreciate you inviting me to come chat with you today i love this topic as well and I, i'm really interested in uh some of the methods that you've been using too so uh I, it's just a pleasure to sit here and chat with you and to get to know you awesome Paige. thank you so much for the compliments and i i have a feeling this won't be the last time we we have a little video chat like this awesome i love it thank you